Acts chapter 16. And we are reading verses 23 to 26. And while y'all find it, Acts chapter three, Acts chapter 16, verses 23 to 26. And I'm going to go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you right now, God, for this day. We thank you for another opportunity that you have allowed us to come together, God, just to hear your word, God, just to, to be recharged, to be with our brothers and sisters, God, just encouraging each other and challenging each other, dear Lord, as we give you glory and praise, God. I just pray right now, God, that you just remove any, any more distractions right now, God, so that we can clearly hear the word that is coming forth, God, so we can hear your instruction, God. For us that you have for us today dear Lord I just pray right now God that you speak through me today God you be the one you be the voice that everyone hears God when I open my mouth dear Lord I thank you right now God and I give you all glory honor and praise in Jesus name amen amen, amen. amen. all right so Acts chapter 16 Verses 23 to 26, and I like this passage. This is this is uh, one of my favorite uh, passages in the the New Testament. I, I used to say this is my favorite, you know, passage in the Bible. But as you get to read the Bible and read different, you know, books and verses and scriptures, you'll see. Okay, I'll add this one. It's not that you know this is not going to be my favorite anymore. But then you get to add on to what your favorite is. Amen? Amen. So, we are at uh, verse 23. Let me just switch because the fan is blowing the Bible pages, but that's alright. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he, did, when he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a violent earthquake, and the foundations of the prison were shaken. All at, at once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains became mm. loose. Amen? Amen? So let me just give a quick um, backdrop on this passage here. Basically, Paul and Silas, you know, they were out doing the work of the Lord, and they were, um, there was a, a, a young lady who basically was demon-possessed, and some of the, uh, the people in the town, like the masters, they used her possession, demon possession, as a means to get money, basically. So, once... Paul and, and and this this particular woman and you can you can actually read in the whole 16th um, chapter up until this point the the lady she she follows Paul and Silas around as they're you know in the town just you know doing God's work and basically Paul just had enough and was just like I command you in the name of Jesus be gone and the spirit left her and because of this those men weren't able to capitalize, they weren't able to use her anymore and, and, and gain money. So they, they were like, yo, lock them up, lock them up. So that's that's the backdrop. So this is, you know, how we got to this particular um, selection of verses, verse uh, 23. So that's the, that's the background on this here. I want to focus primarily on verses 25 and 26, okay? And um, now here, here's where, here's where, where you're going to get it. Your hint, Mary. <laughs> Late, right? <laughs> what I want us to focus on is pray, then praise. So now, do you remember this morning when you did your little dance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I said, yeah. that's it. Oh, okay. But you didn't get it. Okay. I said, all right. I said, that's no, all right. So I once, yeah. once okay. I said, once I, I, you know, bring it to her, we're on the yeah. stand. Yeah. So basically, the focus yeah, yeah, is yeah. pray, then praise. Amen? Amen. So now here, one of the things I want to uh, kind of look at, and, and this kind of jumped out at me, is the how and why. Okay? So, you know, focusing on verse 20, 25. Paul and Silas were just about beaten to death. 
right? You know, they, they were whipped, and, and that's what it said. It said they were, what, um, in the previous verses, that's what, you know, what happened to them. They were beaten, and they were locked up, and they were thrown in jail. So that's what happened to them. So that's how they got to, you know, being put in jail. But now, they were shackled, and, and here's the, the question and, and, and what people don't understand. How is it that they were able to pray, and how is it that they were able to sing? And why is it that they prayed? And why is it that they sent? Because if you look at it, and in, 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 there have been times now, when I was younger, you know, because as I grew up, I was a good girl. When I was younger, <laughs> I used to get, get you know, whoopings from my dad. Those things hurt. Oh, my little hiney, those things hurt. Okay? Now, thinking about Paul and Silas, they got probably beat all over their body. Mm. So now, when I was younger, of course, you know, you cried and everything. and <gasps> That was nothing. That was a little tap. 20 minutes later, you're okay. Right. But this, a beating like this takes your energy. Mm -hmm. It takes your strength. Right. You are probably bleeding. You're, you know, you're wounded. And all you want to do is just be like, Gosh, I'm in so much pain. You want to think about how much pain you're in. You want to think about, okay, is this scar gonna leave? Is this cut gonna leave a scar? How ugly is it gonna be? Oh my gosh, they put a gash in my face. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So to think about, you know what? Let, let me pray. Mm -hmm. That is that is like the farthest thing from most people's mind. Uh, yeah. Not Paul and Silas. They they were like, okay, you know what? Mm -mm, this we we can't wallow. In, in what just happened to us and that and that's how it is a lot of times we just we, we look at the present where we are they they it's like all right let me I'm getting ahead of myself let me just take a moment take a moment amen thank you baby amen it's like they could have questioned God okay they could have said all right God where are your loyal servants we're doing your work where you got us out here, you know, preaching to the people, you got us out here, you know, healing and, and, and miracles, and we get thrown in jail because we cast a demon out of someone in, in the name of Jesus, not in the name of Paul, not in the name of Silas, right. but in the name, and now we got beat and we're in jail? They took, and they could have been justified in it. You know, and they, but we know there's no self-justification in God, but they could have been justified in that. They could have been saying, you know what, yeah, God, what, what's this all about? And you know what, I don't understand this. I don't get this. Is this the result of us being obedient unto you? Yeah. yeah. But no, 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 no. There's, and, and this is the thing. We, pastors talked about this before. Self-inflicted versus God-designed trials or troubles. This was a God-designed thing. Okay, so remember how, you know, when when we do something and then there's a, a, a result, like if we, you know, do a sin and there's a result of it, that's self-inflicted. Right. But right, if, right. if God, this is God designed, right. okay, it, it may not look like it, but this is God designed because you'll see towards the end the reason that this particular thing that God had to design Paul and Silas getting beat up, getting thrown mm -hmm. into jail. Amen? So I just want you to think about that thing. Now, there are two two main things, two key things that we, we really need to, to focus on in verse 25. Prayer and singing hymns. Okay? Verse 25. They were praying and singing hymns to God. And... And I think in my Bible, okay, well, no, it says but. So I know some versions say but at midnight, about midnight, at and at midnight. So let me just, um, what I want you to look at the word and, and you can write this down. It says and at midnight. Paul and Silas wait. And at midnight. And here, basically, they took action, okay? After you know they were they were beaten and, and, and everything, they took action. They didn't wallow and they didn't say, Oh, are you alright? They probably asked if you know the other was okay because genuine concern. That's that's what you should do. But they took action. 
the definition of and here means then, wow. also, or at the same time, right? And we, we talked about this before, they could have wallowed in the pain. They were flogged. My Bible says they were flogged, which means to be beat with a whip, stick, or to scourge. So that's just not your normal, oh, you know, tap on the thigh or, or you know, that's a severe beating. That's painful. So they, they did, but they didn't focus on that. What they did, and at midnight, they prayed. The first thing they did, they prayed. Prayer and this is seeking God's wisdom and guidance on the present situation or circumstance. Okay? They sought the wisdom and guidance of God. And <laughs> Paul was very, very, very versed, very knowledge of the scriptures. I don't know why I said it like that, but it's not good. But, but the, so I can imagine what his prayer was like. He could, oh, what? I can imagine what that, that prayer was like. So he sought God for wisdom and guidance. Okay? And this is, the, it's, this is why we stress how important it is to know this word. That's right. That's why we it's always give you the scriptures. And even if we don't turn to them, we say, look on, look on your own. Because... In the times, God doesn't want you when you pray. Oh God, <gasps> He doesn't. He, wanna, he knows. He sees you. Right. He's right there. He knows right. what's going on. Right. He needs to be reminded of His word. He doesn't be, need to be reminded of of your situation. He already knows your situation. Remind Him of His word. God, you say that I'm more than a conqueror. God, you say that I'm above only and not only. God, you say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's why it's important that we know the word. Even if you know, only know the 23rd Psalm, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Even if that's the only scripture that, that can come to... There are some times when um, a scripture is just, it just leaves my mind. I'm like, I know this scripture. It's like, I know. But then another scripture will just come into play. That's... But that can't happen if you don't know the word. So even if you know you're you're praying and you're, you're like God, and if you just know that, yea, though I walk through the valley, that even if you just know one scripture at that moment when you're praying, pray it and mean it. Pray, God, this is what you said in your word. So and and you know you're a man of your word. You're not gonna lie. So you got to come through. You you get what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you understand yeah. that? Yeah. Amen. It, it's it's no time for pity parties. I mean, no time to. Ain't got time for that. <laughs> and 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 this is the. If if you don't have the words to pray, God, here I am. Please help me. With a sincere heart, really crying out, God, I'm I'm here. I need your help. I I don't need. I don't know what else to say, but help me. He hears that. Because he hears it with your heart. Mm -hmm. And because you're being sincere. And, mm -hmm. and he knows, oh, I, I know James knows some scripture. I know Mary. I know Sean. Ain't, but right now they're just, c c you know, just caught up in the moment where it's like, okay, God, I don't want to focus on this, but I'm, I'm looking to you. But I can't think of the, the one scripture that, that I need to pray right now. So help me. Does that, does that make sense? Because yeah. I, I want you all to understand that. I want you to get it because it's important about prayer. Amen? Amen. And But now this is this is where a lot of times where we get stuck. Sometimes we just want to stay bound. Yeah. So, sometimes we just want to stay bound. We just want to, you know, stay in jail. Mm -hmm. You know, just want to stay shackled up. Stay, you know, yeah. confined. But Christ has given us freedom. He has, he has given us freedom. He has given us liberty. He has given us victory. Amen. Amen. And now, ha have you ever watched, um, I'm trying to think of, I don't even know if they do it. I can't, I can't, I couldn't even think of a movie, but just think of a movie that you, you've, um, you know, watched and somebody's been kidnapped and tied up, right? 
And a lot of times, the person who's been tied up, what are they doing? Trying to get loose. They trying to get loose. No, no, I tell you, anybody sitting there like, okay, what's next? No, they trying to get loose. They trying to <laughs> figure out what they, you know, if they can use their watch to, because mm -hmm. they don't want to be bound. Because when you're bound, right. you're restricted. You're just confined to that one little, little, little area, that one little space. Yeah. God is outside the box. Right. He, right. God don't want to be in this box. In it, and although boxes may be big or small, God is like, I'm bigger than that. You can yeah. find the biggest box that there is. Right. God is like, mm -mm, I'm bigger than that. Right. I can't be in there. Right. So that's why he doesn't want us bound. He doesn't want us to be restricted. Because when you're restricted, you can't move. You can't, you can't. Look, when you're restricted, you can't raise your hand and praise. Right. When you're restricted, you can't do your dance. <laughs> I know that's why it's just Mary. Amen? Okay. So, okay. So, so that's why it's important that we pray. That's why it's important that we have that prayer, that, that word, that knowledge, communication with God. Amen? Amen. And then the second part of that, sealing, um, singing hymns. Okay? Amen. Amen. Singing hymns. Basically, singing hymns is sealing it with a praise. Mm. So they prayed and then they sung hymns. And God just, you know, just showed this to me. We we do intercessory prayer first. And I think from, from to my understanding, most most you know churches, ministries, their order of you know Sunday morning service. Prayer, intercessory prayer, and then they go into, you know, praise and worship. And that's because we're sealing that prayer that we just had yeah. with a praise. Right. Okay, we're, you know, we're interceding, we're, we're praying, you know, especially God, you know, moving the, in the service and, and praying for everyone to hear the word. So we seal it with a praise. Mm -hmm. That's what Paul and Silas did. Basically, it's like this. Okay, I, I, I prayed God. And I'm, I'm going to praise you. You know, victory is mine. You know, yes, I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory is mine. Joy is mine. Everything. I'm not going to sing. All right, Pastor? I'm not going to sing. Amen. 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 <laughs> I know my lane. I'm staying here. Praise God. But but it's basically saying, when, when you seal it with a praise, it's like you're saying, God, I don't I don't need to know how you're going to move. I, I just, I'm just going to trust you. Amen. It's like, God, I don't, I don't need to know the inner workings. I don't need to know the blueprint. I don't need to know all of, you know, from point A to Z. I'm just going to trust you. Right. And I'm going to, and I'm, and I'm, this is, I'm letting you know, this is how I'm showing you that I'm trusting you. I'm sealing it with a praise. I'm sealing it with a praise. It's, it's, Paul and Silas knew the power of prayer and praise. That's what we have to do. We have to know that power of prayer and praise. They they didn't wait until they were out of jail. Okay, they didn't wait till they were out of jail to praise God. They didn't wait until they were, you know, walking to the next town. They prayed him right. They praised and prayed him right there while they were bound. They prayed God, prayed in their bondage. They praised in their bondage. That's a lot of times where we get messed up. We get caught up because we wait until Something we're happens. out. We're, we're, we wait for the, the victory, the, the, the results mm -hmm. before we say, okay, God, yes, I'll praise you. Mm -hmm. We're doubting. Mm -hmm. we, we, we are doubting. We wait for the, the, the fruit, the victory. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, God already gave us the victory. He just needs us to trust him yeah. and, and, and along the process, along the journey. Mm -hmm. And that's when we seal it with a when we seal it with a praise. We're like, okay, God. All right, I, I you know, you know my child, they run away, they, they they've been gone for a couple of months now. I don't know how you're gonna bring them back, God. But I know I trust you. I trust you, God, that and I'm gonna continue praising you, God. I'm gonna continue thanking you. Because God's time and our time are not the same. 
you know, we can't stress it enough. We have to truly understand that. So when we put it out there and we say, all right, God, especially when we say, God, and we know it's in your time, it may be a couple of years before that child comes back. But you got to keep believing and keep trusting and keep having the faith that God is going to bring that child back. And you seal it with a praise. When you doubt and when you when you wait till you're out of jail, out of your bondage yeah, yeah, yeah. to give a praise, right. you know you know what that said. Yeah. That's like God. I, 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 yeah. I, that that tells God that you don't trust it. Right. There you go. That that shows God that you doubt Him. You you only recognize Him when He does something for you. Right. Okay, yeah, I mean, he's though he's always doing something for us. He woke us up this morning. Right, right. So I mean, he's always doing something. But a lot of times we just look at, okay. All right, God. All right, God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Hello. No. All right, God. You know what? Yes. Yes. All right. Praise you. Praise you. And just keep believing. Seal that thing with a praise. Thank you, God. God, I thank you. Even if you. Even if you have to say the words of a song <laughs> instead of singing them, still seal that with a praise. Do, do your dance. Cut, cut a little step. Praise him. Because, and then that, that shows him that you trust him. That shows him that you truly love him. You're like, all right, God, it's in your hands. Amen? Amen. Now, I want to... Um, Look at verse 26 real quick. Is it 26? Yeah. Suddenly. Okay? Yeah. Suddenly. Suddenly means happening, coming, made, or done quickly without warning or unexpectedly. Okay? So many times, do you need me to say it again? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Happening, coming, made, or done quickly, without warning, or unexpectedly. Mm. <laughs> Amen. And this is this is you know what God just threw out at me. So many times we're waiting on God, but He's waiting on us. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. So many times we're waiting on God. All right, God, do your thing. Do your thing. Do your thing. Mm -hmm. He's like, okay, you do your thing. And right. Right. Okay. Right. James two verse seventeen: Faith without works is dead. Yeah. We and, and, and right and we talked about this even on 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 Friday night at Bible study. You know, you, you come up to the pastor and say, Pastor, the, the preacher, lay hands on me so I can get healed from this. Okay, you know, what was the example? You use diabetes, to get healing from diabetes. Okay, you know, but what what are you doing to, to get that healing? Are you, you know, putting down the, the cupcakes and the, the sweets and, and all of that stuff? I mean, I know there are different, you know, types of diabetes and each one, you know, is, is um, I guess, affects your body a different way. But even still, you know what you're not supposed to have and not supposed to have. So you can you can pray for it, you know, all right, yeah, Pastor lay hands on me, yeah, I'm here. But then you're going out and you're buying like a, a 12 pack of, you know, Pepsi. You got <laughs> you know you're not supposed to have that. Amen. You know, amen, amen. But <laughs> 12 pack. <laughs> <laughs> Look, <laughs> praise, praise God but this is the thing God is not a genie you don't just <laughs> yeah. well, you, don't, you don't just rub the Bible and then poof everything happens Amen. All right, God. Mm -hmm. yeah. no that's that's not how it works God is not a genie you don't just say alright have a good day I would do it God no uh -huh. <laughs> that's not how it works mm -hmm. but and in and, 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 and relation in correlation to verse 26 this suddenly happened because of verse 25. So our suddenly happens when we do the prayer and the praise. We can't expect the suddenly to happen if we're not doing our part. Amen. If we're not doing our part. Our suddenly comes, watch this, when we're obedient. 
Okay, there's that word, obedient. When we are obedient to do what, whatever it is God told us to do, what we know we're supposed to do, be obedient in that. Our suddenly comes when we stop focusing on our current situation. You know where you are. Okay, you, you know, yes, this is right now, but focusing all of your energy and your strength on that thing instead of focusing it on God, God is the author and finisher of our faith. He's the one who controls everything. everything. He controls everything. So, given all that, he says that he tells us to cast our cares upon him because his bird is easy and his yoke is light. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, what it is, it's like a struggle for us sometimes because we want to be in control of that thing. Yeah. So, we, we say, okay, God, we, it's like we give him a little bit to see how he handles that little bit and then it's like, okay, I guess I'll give you some. God is like, I want it all. Oh, right. Because watch this. If you give it all to him, he'll wipe that whole thing away. Right. And you won't even have to worry about giving him more, giving him more, oh, giving right. him more. Right. So this suddenly happens when we stop focusing on that. When we, when we stop being so caught up in our current surroundings. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's just like, give it to God. Stop, stop being so caught up in, in where you are. Yes, okay, right now is, right where I am right now is not where I want to be. God, show me and, and, and lead me, give me wisdom and instruction on how to get from, from where I am now. Instead of saying, let me figure it out myself. Because we talked about this before, you try and figure it out by, you know, yourself. You make that left turn, you were supposed to, you were supposed to make right, right, right turn. Right. But if you had prayed, God had been like, actually, what you need to do is just stay right here. Cause... But we got we to gotta be obedient. We got to stop focusing. Because our suddenly comes when we do the prayer and, the, and seal it with a praise and just be obedient unto him. Amen. Amen. Now, I just want to touch upon um, the word midnight. That was in um, verse... 25 that was the, like the second word so basically midnight is the middle of the night right start a new day right? start yep that's just picking in my nose midnight <laughs> starts a new day and in military time that's zero 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 you know fresh brand new and now that's as a noun okay as an adjective resembling midnight as in darkness and this is just something to think about. Have you ever felt like it was midnight while the sun was shining bright? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever felt like it was midnight while the sun was shining bright? That's just that's just something for you to think about as we go into this right here. Two things had happened, and this actually goes down. And you can write this down because we are um, after this verse, after our focal verse. Verses 27 to 31. Just write those down before we go there. The, the midnight resembling darkness is like... <laughs> I think it was Fred Hammond saying... Um, I can't remember the name of the song, but there was a part of the verse... It says, uh, late in the midnight hour, oh, God's, God's going to turn, turn around. around. All right, all right. And around. And around. And around. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. But here, here's the thing. A lot of times we get caught up on the, actu the, the, the natural application of the time of, of midnight, late in the midnight hour, you know. Like I said, think about it. Have you ever had, felt like it was midnight darkness, but the sun was, was shining bright? If you go back to, um, I believe it's in Matthew when Jesus was on the cross and, and he was being crucified. And yeah. right, I think it was right before the first yeah, saying, it, it, it got really dark. Yeah. But it wasn't like dark like how we know it, you know, the, the sun going down. It was like a, a, like a really like probably like if, you know, you put your hand over your eyes, dark like that. So Ooh. now, yeah, so it's, so it's saying that. In, the, in your darkness, in your time of darkness, when you feel like resembling midnight, 
it's time now what you can do is put them together it's time for that fresh start okay time for that fresh start pray and praise that's how you get out of that darkness that's how you get that fresh start pray and praise but now what I want to do is I want to real quick um, cover verse 27 through 31 because and, and I'm gonna um, read it real quick and the keeper of the prisoner awaking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open supposing the prisoners had fled drew his sword and was about to kill himself but Paul called with a loud voice saying do yourself no harm for we all are here then he called for a light ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas and he the prison guard brought them out and said sirs what must I do to be saved so they said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and you and your household remember when I said in the beginning about self-inflicted God versus God design this is right here the reason why it was God designed because that prison guard needed to see the power of God so he could to be saved him and his household okay so I just remember because I pointed that out to you and I said we're gonna we're gonna cover that but now here's the thing two things happened here there was a natural occurrence and a spiritual awakening there was a natural occurrence which is the physical obvious the earthquake yeah. you know the prison doors open the shackles but now the spiritual was the prison guard getting saved. Mm. Now, Hebrews 13, verse 15. And you don't have to turn there, but I'm, I'll just read it. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. That's basically what Paul and Silas were doing when they were singing the praise. And because of that, spiritual breakthrough took place. Because of our praise, spiritual bonds and, and it changed. Spiritual breakthrough took place. So, oftentimes, you know, we, like I said, we, we don't always know the plans. It's not for us to know the plans. It's God designs plans. And truth be told, God will change the plans in a minute. But if we are trusting him and if we are in tune with him, we'll be able to flow and guide and, and, and go where he's telling us to go. The spiritual breakthrough took place because they were praising. Now watch this. They could have fled once the prison doors were open. They could have fled, but they didn't. Why? Because they were on assignment. They, were, they had a God-designed appointment to save that man, to preach to that prison guard about Jesus and save him and his household. So what we have to do is we have to stay on focus. We have to pray, then praise. And and now this is the thing. When you do it, don't do it with the with the um, intention that someone will get the spiritual breakthrough. I mean, that's always a blessing, but when you do it with that intention, you're not doing it with the right heart. Right, right. That's your. Right. Although you know it's a it's a great intent, but you're doing it with the with with a with the wrong heart, because that heart is like, okay, I'm praying and I'm praising. Yes, somebody got saved. Mm, that's a, a a blessing, but that's not why you should do it. You should do it because God told you to do it. Amen. Amen. When we pray and sing praises unto God in the midst of chaos he honors that he totally honors that when we focus on God and not the circumstances he sees that and guess what that forces him to work on our behalf I mean I know God was probably like well, I don't know what God is like but um, yes when we focus on God and not the circumstances he sees that and it forces him to move on our behalf. So in, in this case, when Paul and Silas, instead of talking about how sore they were and how tired they were from being, you know, beat and, and, and shackled up, they said, you know what, let's let's pray. They pro it probably wasn't a, 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 a excite or energetic prayer like Pastor had this morning, but they prayed. Because they probably didn't have the strength. They probably were, you know, so sore and just like, God, we thank you. 
but they prayed. They prayed and they sealed it with praise. They sang praises. Lord, we just want to thank you. They did it. And God was like, wow. They are hurt. They are toe up. But they're praising me? They're, they're praying to me? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. He was like, how do I not honor that? How do I not move on their behalf? They're offering a sacrifice of praise. They are, are, are not thinking about themselves. They are thinking about me. I got to move on their behalf. Amen? Amen. So now, verse, what was it? Verse 20, 28. Well, the end of 27. The prison guard was ready to kill himself. But he ended up living forever. Hmm. Yes. You caught that? Yes. The yes. prison guard was ready to kill himself. Yes. Right, 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 right. But yes. because he got saved, he got saved yes. eternal life. Yes. He was ready to kill. And when he killed himself, he was going to hell. Right. right. Hey. So he said, and, and then once Paul said, no, we, we here, we cool, we cool. Yes. You know, we yes. didn't. Be because now this is the thing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If, if especially, it didn't matter about the other prison guards. They could have been the, I mean, the other prisoners. They could have been the worst people. But Paul and Silas, he knew that if Paul and Silas had got out, he would have died either way. Why? Because of what Paul and Silas did. They cost those men that money when right. Paul cast out the demon in the girl. Right. So because of that, he was like, oh my gosh. I let them escape, I'm gonna die either way, so I'm just gonna kill myself. Right, right. As opposed to whatever the punishment that they, you know, take care out there, mm -hmm. flog them, what, however, he said, I'm just gonna, you know, do it myself, not even worry about it, no. Paul was like, no, 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 we, we cool, we, we here, we, cause we're on assignment. We are, we understand, we pray to God, you know, he spoke to us, we're on assignment, we're here to save you and your household. And that's what happened. He gets yes. to live forever. Mm -hmm. He gets to live forever. And that, that applies to us. Pastor always says it, the streets are watching. People are watching us, especially yeah. as believers. They, they are yeah. watching how we, how we react, especially when, it, when they know our situation, especially when they know, okay, you know, we're, we're in the midst of turmoil. They know they, they they're watching to see our reaction so that when we come out with victory, because that's what Christ has given us, God has given us the victory. When we come out, Mary, yeah. I remember that. How about that? And then you can say, Oh, it was nothing but my God. Right. Opportunity for ministry. Here's a perfect example. An example of someone in a troubled marriage. Um a lot of in in I, I, I'm kind of seeing the, the difference in the, in the generations and stuff. Older generations, they stuck it out. Yeah. They toughed it out. They toughed it out. Now, mm. irreconcilable differences. And, and no, I had to look up irreconcilable differences because I was like, what does that mean? Because people always saying, oh, we, you know, we just, it's just, we're divorcing because irreconcilable differences. I, I was like, I think you just like saying that. But yeah. irreconcilable means incapable of being brought into harmony or adjustment. Incompatible. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so what change that mm -hmm. makes no, y'all well, incompatible? Yeah. It, exactly. So it's it's so quick. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's how it is with, it seems like, the younger generations. The older generations, they ain't know nothing about no irreconcilable differences. Mm -hmm. It wasn't no good. It was <laughs> no, exactly. It was like... Look, we need to sit down and talk about this. Mama, come on. You know what I'm saying? We worked it out as opposed to, all right, you stayed out late. Irreconcilable differences. Let's get a divorce. Yeah. Sat down. <laughs> <laughs> you were right. You won't, you won't cook me breakfast. I wanted my eggs sunny side up, not scrambled. Okay, I'm sorry. The, the, and, and that's the thing. That's what I'm saying about the streets you're watching. What's the solution? Do you call it quits or do you work it out? Work it out. Do you, you, you work it out with praying and praising. You say, okay, you know what, God? You, you know what's going on with this marriage right now, but, but I trust you, God, because what, no, what, what you put together, no man will, will tear asunder. 
So we are here, God. Tell me what to do. What, what do I need to do? Do I need to, to pull back on this? Do I need, um, you know, just reveal it to me, God. Mm -hmm. and, and, and pray with a, don't pray about the mate. Don't pray about them. God, you need to change him. No. Change me, God, because it might be me. And the change in me will affect the change in him. Or do we just say, you know what? Bump this. I can find somebody else. No. You pray and you seal it with the praise. We have to get the Paul and Silas type of attitude. That's basically what it comes down to. We have to get an attitude of where, okay, you know what? We're in this situation. We're not going to wallow in it. We're not going to worry about it. We're going to pray and we're going to praise our way through it. Amen. Because we are... You already know you have the victory. You already know you have the victory. You just say, God, I'm just, I'm reminding you and I'm reminding myself of the victory. I'm, I'm praising, I'm praying, I'm, I'm trusting you. That's what we have to do. We have to get that attitude like, okay, God, here I am. Help me. What do I do? Instruct me. You giving me instruction? All right. I'll seal it with a praise. Get that Paul and Silas type of attitude. Yes. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you, God, for this word that came forth today, God. We thank you for how it just truly touched each and every one of us in our areas, God. Whatever area it may be, God, no matter how great or how small, dear Lord, we will pray. We will seek your instruction, God. We will seek your wisdom, and we will seek your guidance. And then, God, we will seal up with a praise, God. We will thank you. We will sing songs unto you, God, for the victory that you have guaranteed us, dear Lord. We thank you right now, God, and we ask that you just continue, God, just to bring this word back to our remembrance, God, whenever the time shows fit, dear Lord. We thank you right now, and we give you all glory, all honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. amen.